Benedicite Dominus, and welcome to question 20 of the Secunda Secunde. The topic for this lecture is despair, and I am Dr. Thibault. So we are looking at the vices attributed to uh, hope. So um, we, this is a very short uh, section on hope, and now we are finally to the vices, of which there are only two. Um, this can seem a bit redundant because I feel like we've covered this already uh, in other areas, but uh, here we go again. So the sin of despair, uh, only four articles long. Um, how is sin, uh, how is despair a sin, right? That's a good question. Um, and St. Thomas points out that sin is not, despair is not just a sin because it is a sin, but it is the cause of sin. So, uh, Hope is the virtue. Despair would be a sin, but it also causes other sins. So, you know, if you are uh, to live in despair, it might lead you down a path of self-destruction, right? It might lead to drugs and alcohol and uh, sexual addictions and other. You know, it could lead to dozens of other sins, right? If you ha if you're living in despair, so it is a sin and it leads to others. Uh, he points out using St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, who, despairing, have given themselves up to lasciviousness uh, unto, working, unto the working of all uncleanliness and unto covetedness, right? So despairing leads to the other sins, even as St. Paul points out. Uh, hope is in conformity with uh, the true opinion, right? So your, your hope conforms to what is true, right? It's, he calls it the true opinion, um, but really faith, right? The true opinion opinion is faith. So hope is in conformity with faith. Despair is in conformity with false opinions and therefore sinful. Uh, and we get a bit, uh, well, I can do it now. Uh, so faith, remember, was an intellectual virtue, right? Do you believe or do you not believe, right? This is a matter of the intellect, right? Uh, you've been proposed a set, set of uh, beliefs and do you ascribe to it or not? This is an intellectual thing. Once it's lived out in the will, then it kind of becomes a form of charity. Uh, now, hope was in the will, right? It's not an intellectual thing. Do you, do you hope with your whole soul, right? Uh, with your heart, uh, with your action? Uh, something you're drawn to, right? It's an appetite. Um, uh, so therefore, hope in some sense is this act of the appetites, but it's in conformity with faith. So faith is the is the truth, uh, and hope is in conf is actions and desire and you know, being drawn into appetites towards faith which is the truth right which is the truth despair would then be the opposite where it rejects faith uh it's actions that reject faith uh is despair uh without unbelief is despair i guess in some sense unbelief if you despair is it because you don't believe is that another way of putting it uh and uh, saint thomas points out that these are two different things so first uh, Faith and hope are two different things, right? So unbelief is a, a vice of faith, right? So unbelief is the opposite of faith. Since faith and hope aren't the same thing, the opposite of uh, hope isn't also unbelief, right? It's uh, different. Uh, unbelief belongs to the intellect, as I kind of just described in the last article, uh, but despair to the appetites, right? So this is a, a, a rejection, a false appetite, right? And another example of this, is, I think this is a point one and point two. Point two of this section, I think, is we can be right about the universal but wrong about the particular. particular. And St. Thomas talks about this a lot. So if you are presented with uh, the faith, and you assent to the faith, you ascribe to the faith. Uh, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, right? Um, does it mean that you can't despair about your own personal salvation? Yes, you can say, I fully believe in God. I just don't believe that I will be saved, right? So that would be 
um, maybe a false opinion. If, you, if it's the idea that you could not be saved, it might be a false opinion, but it doesn't mean that you, you might not believe the tenets of the faith, right? So there's a difference between the universal and the particular. A person can have faith in God and despair, right? They're not contrary. Is despair the worst sin or the most grievous sin? And uh, this is an interesting article. Um, St. Thomas points out that uh, the theological sins, sins against the theological virtues, are worse than sins against the cardinal virtues, right? So having uh, a si unbelief or despair is worse than being imprudent. Right? Uh, things about earthly things matter less than things about divine things, right? So therefore, they're, they're worse sins. But among the theological virtues is despair the worst. worst. And St. Thomas points out unbelief uh, is due to man for not believing in God's own truth. Right? So not believing in God, God's truth is unbelief. Hatred of God arises from man's being opposed to God's goodness. Right? So tr against truth and then against goodness. Right? So will and the intellect, right? So against God's truth and God's uh, goodness. And then despair is consisting in man ceasing to hope for a share in God's goodness. So if you look at these three, the first two are notably different than the third. So the first two are against God himself. It's against God's truth and against God's goodness. Right? So God is true and good. So it's against God's nature, right? Uh, those are worse sins, right? <laughs> because it's a sin against God. The third uh, is, and some could be, a sin of not believing that God could save you, but in some ways it's about you. <laughs> um, saying, because uh, my sinfulness, my brokenness, my who I am, I cannot be saved, which is about God in indirectly, right? Saying God doesn't have the ability, so that it's a sin, and it, that makes it a pretty serious sin, but it's usually because of y your own character that you are despairing, which is then less of an insult against God and more of an insult against yourself, right? Indirectly, it insults against God. Uh, St. Thomas points out that despairing can be the most dangerous, though, because I... and kind of get at what he means if you have unbelief you say well i don't think god exists right okay well then you can still get married and have children and volunteer at the food pantry and go to work and do normal things but you have insulted god right it's a, it's, a, it's not good but you can live an otherwise good life right uh if you have hatred to of God, uh, maybe worse. Maybe it's a bit worse. Um, but if if it's restricted to hatred of God, but not of neighbor, uh, you know, you could live perhaps an otherwise good life. Uh, but if you are despairing about uh, your soul, and you, you're you're convinced that you're going to be, uh, if you're going to go, that you're going to go to hell. Right. If you're convinced that you're going to hell, then why hold back from anything? Right? Why be truthful? Why be good? Why, you know, it's like a self-destruct button. Right? Um, uh, it's it's in some ways worse. Right? If the first two you don't believe hell exists, you you know you're um, uh, a humanist. Right? You're a humanist. At least you believe in humanity, right? <laughs> At least you believe in human nature. Uh, if you are if you are despairing, you believe God exists. You believe there is hell, and you believe you're going there. Then why do anything good, right? So in some ways, despair can be worse. Okay, and the last of the articles uh, is despairing. Is despair related to sloth? Now, this is coming from St. Gregory the Great's uh, reflections on morality, and he connects the two together. Uh, and he says uh, that they are related. For, 
but of course it's more complicated. So hope can be lacking when one does not see uh, it is an arduous good or if one sees it as impossible, right? So uh, if you don't realize that hope can be difficult or uh, or if you see it as impossible, you're not going to try. Now this is interesting because it's relating to really question 130 of the Summa uh, later on. Uh, so uh, as an uh, as an appetite, uh, man can can want other things uh, through lust. So if you say, uh, I don't care about the divine, I don't care about heaven, I don't care about this because, because I'm lusting after the natural things of the world, um, that can be one way that you despair, right? If you are rich and famous, you might despair about uh, divine things. But the sloth could be another part of it because it could look at these arduous goods uh, or, or consider it impossible and you just give up. So sloth is just, you know, hope is hard, right? But it's with divine assistance, right? It's, 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 it's it, everlasting happiness through divine, with, with divine assistance. It's, you don't have to do it on your own, but it would be somebody who says, it's just too much, it's just too hard, it's, and, and then despairs, right? So it could be through lust because you're distracted, right? You don't even, the important things don't matter as much to you because you're distracted or sloth because uh, you are distracted because you just don't even bother, right? You just complete despair. So in conclusion, despair is a sin and causes sins. Uh, dis despair uh, does not require unbelief. You could have faith and still despair. Uh, despair is grievous, right? not the most grievous, but it's a theological uh, sin against the theological virtues, so it is grievous. Um, and despair is related to lust and sloth, uh, but sloth as well. Okay, next we will get into presumption, but that is it for this video. Okay.